Hey folks, seeing as it's a new year, I thought I would give everyone an update on what's been going on in my garage. Let's start with the Dakar BMW F650 uh, I bought back in April. I got it as a birthday present to myself. I'd always wanted a Dakar even before I started riding bikes. And I finally had found a good one at only a few hours away. I did a bunch of maintenance on it after buying it. And over the summer, I enjoyed putting on a whole bunch of new parts like knobby tires and, and other maintenance bits. You can see the videos of that purchase and the work I did on it during uh, the summer at the links below. For the second half of the year, I enjoyed just riding it around Illinois and Wisconsin with my brother-in-law and spending time enjoying it uh, on other off-road tracks. But as the cold weather came and some ideas for upcoming purchases were in my head, we'll talk about more on that later, I got to thinking. As it happened, my buddy Josh was looking for a bike like mine around the same time, and I ended up taking his offer to buy it. So I miss it, and I didn't even plan to list the bike for sale, but Josh's opportunity to, to take it on and give the bike a, a well-deserved home was too much to pass up. He's a good friend. I know he'll take good care of the bike and use it the way he should. Uh, meanwhile, I can use the space in the garage and my money for other stuff. So it was bittersweet seeing it go. You know, I'll miss seeing it in the garage, but at the same time, I'll enjoy uh, having some more space and uh, and enjoy the adventures that Josh is going to have with the bike. In fact, soon after I sold it to Josh, he already had big plans for it and immediately started building a jig to transport the bike. He loaded up the jig, the bike, all into his Honda Element and drove from Illinois to Las Vegas, Nevada for some very serious riding. I was blown away again by Josh's skills, not only from when I saw him load up the bike at my house to uh, take it home in his pickup, but also seeing these trails in the southwest and watching what he can do on these videos is impressive. Check out the gnarly trails and tough rocky climbs he's going through on these videos, it's crazy. I was impressed that the bike can handle this stuff too, but also not too surprised since the BMW uh, bike brand is known for some pretty tough equipment. Apart from one minor fall, Josh pulled off the trip with no issues. As you can see, I wasn't joking when I said Josh is going to use the bike the way it should be used. I also included Josh's channel in the description below if you want to check out his many awesome projects, including an upcoming BMW 7 Series sedan build. Uh, he also has a pretty impressive off-road electric mountain bike project. So take a look at those videos and others that he has. He has some really cool stuff and ideas. Let's move on to my 92 Camaro Z28, which you've also seen on the channel. This was also a purchase of the heart earlier this year, and you can see the first video I did on it in the description below, and some subsequent videos on maintenance and some other projects I got into. So check those out. Beyond just the nostalgia of this car and my own personal connection to this type of car as well, I was able to do a ton of work and a ton of fun projects on it, including taking it to the Radwood show, a short cruise down Road 66, getting involved with some friends and some shenanigans with them, taking it to the racetrack, and taking the car to visit an abandoned dealership in the Chicagoland area. I did not get to take the car to Woodward Avenue Dream Cruise like I had hoped. Unfortunately, that coincided with a two-week trip my family and I took to the East Coast around the same time. This Z28 was a case of me having wanted one since I was a little kid, and I finally got to do that while knocking out some goals and knocking out some work on it at the same time. At this point, I decided to think about what to do next with it. Well, I had done most of what I wanted already, and I thought about how much, or rather how little, I wanted to store it over the winter in order to keep it out of the salt and rust-free this, this season. While I thought about how would it be interfering with other projects and other garage toys that I had over the winter, I decided it was time to let the car go and raise some money for my plans in 2022. After listing it for sale, I accidentally ruined the title in the laundry, so I had to wait several weeks for a new one to come. After that setback, I was able to sell it to a local woman who happens to have an impressive pony and muscle car collection of her own already. Once I heard that she had planned to fix up the Z28, give it the paint it deserves, and keep it along with its other pony car siblings in her garage, I was convinced that she was the one to take this car from my hands. And so, after her very complete uh, once over to make sure the car was legit, she bought the car and I knew I'd made the right decision because she was a real true enthusiast and I'm really glad she has it. In fact, 
uh, she has sent me pictures of the paint that she's done on it uh, through a friend, and I've been super impressed with how well that's gone. Uh, this is the paint that this car needed to take it to the next level. As many of you have said in the comments, it did not deserve my ham-fisted attempts to paint it in my garage myself. Uh, she's got a professional or semi-professional job done on it now. As you can see in the pictures, it looks fantastic. Uh, so I'm really glad the car is getting the paint it deserves to take it to the next level. Still, it was sad to see it go. And I'm really glad my kids got the chance to help me out on it. Because who knows how many more chances I'll get to own a gas-guzzling pony car like this. Which brings me to why I decided to clear up my garage for the winter. In May 2021, Ford announced the new Lightning EV truck. I was blown away by the capability and the price and tried to reserve one that very day that it was revealed. Unfortunately, there was some problem with the Ford uh, website and it couldn't verify my account. And at that point, I kind of lost interest for a while and I thought I'd see how things play out over the next few months with this car and what the EV reveal is gonna uh, result in ultimately. However, later in the year, I realized the EV Lightning is still the best deal out there for an EV of any kind, off-road truck or otherwise. So I ended up reserving one, uh, one of the base model Pro $40,000 examples is what I want and what I wanted to reserve. However, now I'm wondering how long it might take for Ford to actually build a lot of these base model Pros until they make it down to my numbered reservation, which I'm guessing is around 130000 I know not everybody is going to take the Pro, not everyone's going to take their reservation at all, but still, it's looking like it's going to be a while before I can get my EV Pro uh, Lightning built. Another concern I had was how long it would take to recharge or find a charging location when I'm on really rural back roads in Wisconsin or Michigan or even the UP of Michigan. And these are all giving me second thoughts about the EV game as it stands now with this range and charging speed and capability. Meanwhile, Ford's EV tax credit will be gone uh, long before my Lightning is built. So I'm having second thoughts even now about the Lightning. But I have no regrets about selling my toys. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll bring in 2022. But uh, as long as I have money to think about it and time, I'm, I'm totally fine with the decisions I made. I'm keeping my Lightning reservation. I also added the Silverado EV work truck reservation to go along with it. Both trucks are expected to be delivered to me in around 2024, and I can decide before then which one I'm going to ultimately take, if either of them. In the meantime, I'm also considering other vehicles for my next purchase, a uh, VW bus electric vehicle, the Jeep Wrangler 4xe, uh, Cayenne hybrid, or something else interesting. Let me know what you think below what I should get for my next daily driver in terms of off-road capable, either hybrid, EV, or even a pure gas car again as my next daily driver. I'm curious to know what you guys think. It's running okay. To wrap things up for the day, I still have my old Honda XL250S that needs attention to the carburetor, exhaust system, and clutch adjustment. If you know of any parts bikes that might be helpful to me, please let me know. The exhaust headers for these things are more expensive than I thought, and they're hard to find in good use condition. I also have my 2010 Forerunner that I use for off-roading, and I'm looking forward to another year of doing that and other back-road adventures with it. Still, uh, seeing as it'll be a while before I get my next daily driver or EV, let me know what toy I should buy this summer since I'm still thinking of getting one more fun thing this summer. I was thinking maybe jet ski, the elusive Fox Body Mustang that I've been searching for for the past nine years, RV trailer for camping trips, maybe a van converted into an RV trailer, another Honda Quad, Ford Raptor, who knows? Let me know what you think because I'm curious. Thanks for watching and stay warm this winter.